In the previous video, we briefly talked about what the codes on these amateur Rakushi motors mean in terms of how the rocket motor will perform. But one interesting thing we realized is that we can have motors with the same energy that have different thrusts, different average thrusts they'll deliver throughout their burn. So for instance, we had the C2 motor and also a C6 motor. And I mentioned that the C2 and the C6 motor were essentially the same energy, but they just experienced their burn in different ways because they delivered the thrust either all at once at the start or more gradually over a longer period of time. But a question comes, how exactly is the rocket engine actually performing that and able to make that difference between those two different burn profiles? Well, it turns out this has something to do with actually how the rocket looks on the inside. So we're gonna try and open up one of these uh, rocket motors and see what's actually inside. There's definitely some revealing things about how a solid rocket motor actually works that we'll find by trying to open one of these things up. So let's go ahead and do it. Trust me, I'm an engineer. I think we put this thing right here. Two hours later. Now we have our two uh, motor pieces, which we have taken apart. And let's start looking at the C20 motor. So that's gonna be this one. So if we look inside here, you can see the different parts of the rocket motor. Uh, down at the bottom here, we have the clay nozzle. This is where the gases are gonna come out of. And it's just there to help improve the efficiency of the rocket. And then we have basically the propellant, which is containing both the fuel and the oxidizer. So you notice there's a hole that goes from the nozzle into the propellant. And that's basically where the burn is gonna start. Now, if we compare this, to the C6-5 motor, you'll see that it's actually got a little bit of a different anatomy. So here we have same clay nozzle, like it was on the C2 motor, but then we have uh, the propellant. But you'll notice that the hole that goes into the propellant grain is actually a little bit longer. And that's gonna be what makes the difference as to how powerful the rocket is. So because there's more surface area that's exposed at the start of the burn, you can actually get uh, a lot higher of a thrust and it'll burn a lot faster. The force that a solid rocket motor can generate works primarily on the principle of how much surface area is exposed to the hot combustion gases. So because the longer insert into the C6 motor has more surface area exposed at the start, it's able to burn through its propellant much quicker than the C2 motor. The next difference you'll notice is that with the C2-0 motor, there's just propellant grain and then that's the end. But conversely, with the C6-5 motor, you'll notice there's a black line here at the top. And that's basically the delay. So what ha will happen is that the propellant grain will burn all the way back until it gets to this delay. And then the main propulsive phase of the burn will be over. Basically this black part will burn slowly and then it'll get to the finally top bit here, which will be the explosive charge that releases the parachute system. Of course, we see that on the C2-0 motor, that charge isn't there. So it's just gonna burn through the propellant and then that'll be it. But why would that be something that someone would want? Usually you want to have a charge to deploy a parachute. Well, actually, uh, it turns out that this type of motor is more useful for things like staging. So basically you can have another motor that's on top of this one, if you imagine it kind of like this. And what will happen here is that this propellant will burn, 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 it'll get here. And then all you'll have left here will be hot exhaust gases. And this will flow into the nozzle of the next rocket and ignite the propellant there. So essentially you have an automatic ignition system if you use this uh, dash zero delay motor. So in the static fire that we did, you can see that the delay starts burning once the large flame in the C6 motor is reduced significantly. And then you can also see the finish of the burn on the C2 motor. And finally, once the delay is finally burned on the C6-5 motor, we see the explosive ejection of the entire motor. So now that you're armed with the knowledge of what's going on inside of a solid rocket motor, you should be able to apply this to your next rocketry project. Of course, Astra is not using solid rocket motors in order to power its rocket transcendence to the Kármán line. Instead, we're going to be using a hybrid system. But hybrid rocket motors work on a very similar principle when it comes to thrust generation. It's actually the area of the exposed propellant grain which determines how much thrust there's going to be. So for Astra, it made sense to first understand how a solid rocket motor works in order to apply those principles to designing our hybrid rocket. 
If you have any lingering questions about rocketry in general, feel free to leave them in the comments. Also, if you like this content, be sure to help us with the algorithm and leave us a like. And remember, to expand your horizons. <laughs>